Hey everyone, welcome back to Land Investing Online, where we teach students how to profitably buy and sell vacant land. This is the simplest, least competitive, and most profitable sector of real estate. For more information, visit Land Investing Online, join our free Discord. There's tons of successful, successful investors in there. Come learn from the best. I'm Daniel Apke, joined by my brother and business partner, Ron Apke. Welcome back, Ron. Hey, Dan. Before we start, I want to go over a question from one of our members. It is... I really love the area I live in Northern California and I want to buy and sell land there. Is it possible to only stick to one area? Yeah, I mean, that's a great if you know the market even better, but we have plenty of people, students who are doing this. Northern California has a ton of land, big and small, uh, and it's a huge area. Maybe you even get up into Washington, Oregon up there. But uh, you can, we have members that, make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year by staying in one area. The more knowledge you have about an area, the longer you can stay there, the more sustainable it is. And really people like me personally, me and my, Daniel personally, we've done deals up there, but we can't compete with you as far as buying and selling land if we don't know the market like you do. It's a huge leg up on the competition. So I, I think you 100% can. Maybe there's a point down the line, a few years down the line when like, You've just, it, it's, there's just not much more to do, but you can do this for years in my mind and stay in one market and change up what you're doing. Yeah, you definitely can. And you can kind of, we had another one on niches. You can go into different niches within that and you know the market so well, you have the realtors there. <clears throat> you might even get some referrals, have a great buyer's list in that area. Like I see a lot, a lot of benefits to staying in one area and maybe not a hundred percent staying there. You can dabble in some other areas maybe, but if, if you want to stay focused in one area, go for it. I think it's very, very possible and you can make a lot of money and competitors won't be able to come in there and really touch you because um, it's just, you're going to know the area you're pricing it correctly. Maybe you can buy higher and you just have all the connections there. But Today's topic, how did we get to where we are today? How did we quit our nine to five jobs? There, we have so many members, their end goal, and we had a goal setting episode recently, but say our end goal is how to quit our, our job. How did we do that? How do you work backwards? If your end goal is how to quit your job, let's work backwards from there. I, I want to start by Ron giving a background of um, his story because his is pretty unique and it's it's really good. I think a lot of people requested us to talk about our stories because we were in your guys' position at one time. I had a nine to five job. Ron had a job as well. Ron's had multiple jobs actually, uh, but we've all been there. My end goal was to quit my nine to five. Ron's end goal was kind of, he had a little different of a story that he'll talk about, but let's let's hop into that. Yeah, I mean, I love this topic. I, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of talking about myself all the time or stuff like that, but I think it's something that people can find value in. So I was in sales. I actually started as a teacher. Uh, so I was a teacher for a couple of years. That wasn't the right thing for me. I got into sales. I was very successful in sales because I just worked harder than other people. Um, I found success fast. I did that for a few years. So sales, I made a, I, I made good money where I could save money, and I was pretty. I was single and not married at that time. Um, so I, I could save a lot of money. I was living with my other brother, actually. So I, I did a good job saving money and putting that up. So from sales, I, I always had a passion in basketball. When I was a high school teacher, I coached basketball as well. And I, I said, I want to be a college basketball coach. Like that was one of my big goals. I had a passion for it. So I actually went in and I, I moved not across the country, but a thousand miles away to coach college basketball. And this is when I was engaged and I had a son. So we, we obviously had a little more uh, financial responsibility, but we had a lot saved at that point. Uh, from there, so Dan and I started investing in land probably after a year or so of when I was coaching college basketball. Uh, from that point, like I saw the future in land, but at, at that point we weren't making money. We were spending money. We were about $30,000 in the hole, maybe not that much, maybe 10 or $15,000 in the hole before we really started to see the profits. But I actually quit basketball to be an entrepreneur, to do this full time before we were making a bunch of money, before we were making money to support our family. This is, like I said, where I'm telling my story. This isn't something I suggest for everyone to do as far as quitting before you can financially support your family. But I really believed in this. Uh, what my mindset is when I kind of believe in something, when I think it's going somewhere, I'm going to go 100% in. And that's what I did. 
we had money saved where we could we could live for a year or maybe eight months if I the land thing didn't work out. So so, so fast forward that year after I quit, we made I think Daniel and I both made about three hundred thousand dollars each or something our first year. So we did well with that. And just the rest is history, to be honest. Like land is the reason. I, land is the reason I've made most of my income as far as that. We have other things. Uh, but I kind of dove, like I said, that's my mindset is diving 100% into something. And that's what we did. That's what I did, at least. Daniel has his own story. But but that was my mindset and it worked out. Um, but like I said, I'm not pushing you guys to do that. It, it's what I did. It worked out for me, but at the same time, like it, it was a big risk in what I did. But at the end of the day, I knew basketball coaching, it just wasn't sustainable with a family at that level. So I knew I had to find something else. So my mindset was, I'm going to do this as hard as I can for a year with the land. If it doesn't work out, I'll go get another sales job and support my family. Um, and that was my mindset going into it. I was okay losing the money I had saved because I wanted this freedom that I have now. Exactly. So we, he really had to dive in full 100% to make this work. Um, if it didn't work, like he said, he would have been back at a nine to five. So he quit his job with knowing that it's this or going back to a sales job. So we put a ton of effort into that. Um, really, really cool story. Because I, I think there, there's a lot of pressure on us um, to do well because of because of that. And he just needed to make it work. So the pressure kind of went up a little bit, but we just kept our heads down and really stayed focused and worked off our lead measures of what we knew was going to, we just really believed in the business model. But for me, I also had a sales job. I had, um, right after college, I actually went straight to a sales job and it was outside sales position. And I was working um, pretty much out of my car, going client to client, customer to customer. I uh, spent nine, 10 hours a day in a car most days, six to 10 hours at least driving hundreds and hundreds of miles a day. Um, so I was really just spending a lot of my time listening to podcast audible is talking to people on the phone, answering customer calls, all that stuff. I actually enjoyed it. It was pretty fun. Um, especially talking about it and thinking back, it was, it was a good job. I liked it. But, um, so I had that and, and I was just getting really bored. So I was looking for, um, different ways to make money and different ways to start a business, to get out of that nine to five job. And Ron and I had been investing in real estate at that point. We own different properties and I always really liked real estate, but I actually, I went into drop shipping at first. That was my first real like business ever. I started a drop shipping store and the first six months of those, I lost a lot of money. I was in debt. I think my credit card bracked up to almost $20,000. The banks weren't giving me my money. I had money locked up due to certain reasons or whatever. Um, so I had to get through those obstacles. But after about eight months of doing that, it ended up, um, you know, providing a really good income for me. And then, um, so that was my my main focus for a while was that. And then Ron and I started uh, the land business after a while. And I still had my e-commerce store, my drop shipping store while we started that. And I just really wanted to diversify. I didn't know how much I believed in the drop shipping business model long term. Um, and we we I continued to buy real estate as well. But I wanted to diversify my income before I quit my job. So I still have a job at this point. And I didn't think that the drop shipping was sustainable enough to quit my job. So we started the land business and about six months after that, we were making a uh, really good income. And I think that's what it, I think I ended up quitting my job actually month one, I believe month one or two of actually um, sending out mail and diving into the land business. So after a month of doing that, I just thought it was going to work, I think. And I, I think I had that in the back of my head that, you know, this land business is going to work. If my drop shipping business fails or whatever goes down in tanks, I think I have the land business to fall back on. Um, but keep in mind at that point, we we're, I think over 20, I think we were over $20,000 in the hole just from sending out so much mail. Um, so although I had another income, I really put pressure on this land business and really focused on it. Cause I thought that was like my security blanket. Cause I quit my job and it took us about six months from that point when I quit my job to make a living off of it. Luckily I had that drop shipping store to pay. Um, but I, I did, when I quit my job, I had a good income from my drop shipping store. I ended up selling that drop shipping store for quite a bit of money. So I wasn't really too stressed financially. Um, and that's what I kind of recommend people typically when they ask about this is have an income on the side before you just quit. Because when you have an income, you can save up. And we talked about this in another episode, you can save up all of your money 
that you're making from your side hustle at the time. So if you're land investing, you can save up all this money and keep investing it instead of having to pay yourself 7,000, 8,000, whatever you need to live off of a month. You can take that seven or $8,000 and just push it back into land or whatever that business is and, and go from there. So that's kind of my story. I started drop shipping and then I went into land and I had other online businesses as well, but I went into land and land really was like my security blanket and got me. Um, I, I think land was a big reason why I was able to quit my job. Although we didn't make any money by that point, I just, I thought, you know, I was diversifying by creating these new businesses for future, for the future income potential. But that's, that's my story. Yeah. I think it's funny <clears throat> that we had a, I don't know exactly what we named the, uh, episode, but it's how to make this your full-time income. And we intentionally, like, we didn't tell our stories there. Um, we didn't suggest what we did. Um, probably until now, you probably don't know exactly what our background was. But that is, that episode, we don't suggest what we did because it, it was very risky. Um, it's just both of our personalities. Some people out there who are listening to this probably have similar personalities. Um, and you got to believe in this thing to do what we did. Like, you really need to believe in it. You can't look back. You can't question every mailer. You can't question a thousand dollars lost in mail if you mess something up. But like I said, that's not something that we suggested when we did our uh, how to make it a full time income. There's a lot safer ways to make it a full time income and still do really well. Um, but Daniel and I, I think just we're just full bred entrepreneurs, to be honest, Dan. And we're sick of like we look back at it and maybe miss working with other people and that kind of stuff but we wanted our freedom as far as being able to work from home. We're, we're responsible with having our own schedule and being accountable to each other as well as our employees. Um, and that's how we made it work. I think at the end of the day. Yeah. And I've, I've personally always known I was going to be an entrepreneur. I think in the back of my head, it was just how, how am I, I never knew how I was going to get there. Um, and looking back at my path, it's, it was interesting how I got there, but I think we dove in 100%. I think the main thing is just believe in, believing in the business and taking action um, were the main things for us. We just stayed so consistent. I mean, there are times we both wanted, I don't know, wanted to give up if it's not, we just didn't see results. And we we're just questioning if, if it was going to work at one point. Like business isn't easy. This this business model, it's easier than most, I'd say. And the upside's greater than most by far, I'd say but you're going to hit obstacles. You're going to send mail. You're not going to get results back, whatever it is. Um, and there's going to be mail. Maybe you crush it your first mailer. Like that happens a lot too. So it just depends. But I think just having that belief and knowing that this business model works. So you, it, it keeps you moving forward, I think. Yep. No, I, I agree personally. And like we've talked about before, there's not a lot of money up front that you need to put into this business. Um, if you're choosing between this and opening, I don't know, some kind of store or a restaurant, right. like this is pennies on the dollar to what you'll be spending to open up a restaurant or something like that. Uh, it, it, I don't think you have to be like a full blown entrepreneur to be successful in this. Um, I do think you have to be able to self-motivate. I think those are the important things, being able to self-motivate and uh, maintain your schedule. But I don't think you need to be like the most uh, intense entrepreneur out there to be successful in this. But uh, that, that's our story, guys. I think, I think hopefully it helps you guys. Um, we're not doing it to... Um, I think we're just doing it to kind of share our story because we have suggested other things as far as how to make this a full-time income and stuff like that. Um, our story is a little different. I know there's people out there who are similar to Daniel and I with that intensity and going 100% in. So I think this can be valuable for those people as well as the other people as well. Yeah, and you can do this if you're not 100% and you can always, always do this on the side too. Like we, we wanted to be full-time entrepreneurs, but we have members that they don't really want to be full-time entrepreneurs. They want to do this on the side, make a lot of money. And maybe they like their job or whatever they're doing, or maybe you just want to put five hours a week in or five hours a month in, whatever it is, this business model is very adaptable. Um, so you don't need to be like us and just dive in a thousand percent and send out, you know, 30,000 mailers your first few months. You don't need to do that at all. You can take it slow, take the course at your own pace, really go through it. We teach you everything you need to know in the course, but the pace is up to you. And I've seen a lot of people successful at it that, I mean, in our accountability group, there were people after 14 months that really only sent a few mailers and going at their own pace. And now I'm looking back at them and talking to them and they're getting deals now. Like they're, they just stayed, continued to educate themselves, continued to work forward. And they're, 
they all of them have full-time jobs for the most part and they're just working at their own pace and it's cool to see that if you if you asked me 12 months ago if they were going to be successful at this or not i probably would have guessed no just because they weren't sending the mail and doing that but now they're sending they've been sending consistently a small amount of mail they're getting these deals and the people who stayed consistent in the education and just moving forward at whatever pace worked for them it it really worked and i think it's really cool to see that side as well i agree that's a good point but uh i think that that's it dan i think we can wrap this up um i think that hopefully that was helpful like i said that's a good example you ended with yeah absolutely well hope you guys enjoyed this i would love to hear your story we're going to have some uh guests on coming soon we have it scheduled in the books i believe uh for and you'll hear some other people's stories as well because everyone has a unique story i love to hear them and i think you guys do as well other than that guys thanks for joining don't forget visit landinvestingonline.com join our free discord we have blogs on that. All of our YouTube videos are on our site. Just go check it out. Educate yourself. See if it's for you. Hop in our Discord. Say hi. We have tons of successful investors. Other than that, guys, thanks for joining. See you next episode. Thanks, guys.